So let's talk about the AI engineering roadmap for 2025. These are the four steps you need to learn to master AI. Now let's look at them one by one. Step one, learn the statistics and probability. Here, you have to focus on probability distributions, which will help you in identifying how the data is scattered. Let's say you have data scattered like this. Imagine these are weights of people in India, where you can see there are some outliers on the extremities. This will help us in finding the anomalies and will help our model to understand the data better. Second is regression analysis. A lot of time it happens that you want to predict a continuous variable or you have to predict the price of a car in a secondary market. For that, you have to understand the relation of the price of the car with some other variables like the number of seats, kilometers driven, the engine time. For that, we need the cause and effect relationship understanding. Here, regression analysis will be really helpful. Third, hypothesis testing. Now, this is very critical for making data-driven decisions. What we do over here is we sometimes try to do A-B testing. For example, we are doing some analysis on a website where we're trying to see what converts better. Let's say there is an add to cart button in red or there's an add to cart button in green. If a learner comes to our website and he enrolls, which button made that conversion? Now, red can make 20 conversions out of 100. A green can convert maybe 25. But is it significant to say it for the whole population? That is where hypothesis testing comes in picture. Fourth, descriptive statistics. A lot of times it is also important for us to understand the central tendency of the data. Here we talk about mean, median, mode, which helps us in identifying patterns, trends and variability in the data. Step two is to master data analysis with Python. Previously, we were doing everything from scratch. But nowadays, there is no need to reinvent the wheel again. We have libraries like NumPy, Pandas that will help us in data manipulation. In fact, we have nowadays Polars as well. But for data visualization, we have libraries like Matplotlib or Seaborn. Here, we do data modeling using scikit-learn. These libraries are like your Swiggy and Zomato, where you do not have to cook your food, you just have to order it. 100% of the data scientists use these libraries. So you do not have to hesitate in using them. Step three is to pick up a framework of your choice. You can either pick PyTorch by Facebook or TensorFlow by Google. Both of these are industry standard frameworks for building your AI models. Here, you can build your deep neural networks from scratch from any of these frameworks. Step four is to specialize and innovate. In this, we will pick up a framework of our choice which will help us in integration with already built websites like Hugging Face, which can help us in downloading the open source model or OpenAI, where we can take help of the APIs to get our inference. Langchain is one of the frameworks which will help us in the integration part. We can use Langchain to build application that can get us a summary of the PDFs, summary of the YouTube video or summary of anything that can be loaded as a document. Imagine you have to book a hotel from Make My Trips website. Now you can design an agent and develop it using Langchain framework that will help you in fetching the real time prices from Make My Trip and can help you in taking a decision. Furthermore, you can build your own API that can extract information using any text document. You can also build retrieval augmented generation apps, which will give you your domain specific understanding in easy words. You can use it, deploy it for your own industry use cases. Next comes Edge AI. Here, we try to put our AI inferences closer to our device. If you see it on your screen, you have your appliances, which are very much closer to your AI. It is built around it only. And then the final inference is sent to your stakeholders. Whereas traditional systems or cloud AI requires the input from these devices, it will process it on a cloud server and then it will send to your stakeholders. Now, how come this becomes very important is we're going to see in this slide. This will help us in real time processing because all the inferences are calculated at the device level only. The final inference is sent to your stakeholders. But in cloud AI, you send the raw observations, your raw data 
and then the processing happens at the cloud server. This will further help you in processing the data locally where your privacy concerns are also addressed. Third, since all the processing is happening at the edge device, so the latency is also reduced, which is further helpful when you're talking about AR or VR applications. Now, the important part, experimentation and building projects. So if you are a beginner in AI, you can pick up projects like fake news detector, which can be built using raw natural language processing. And here you can apply concepts like text classification. If you do not want to spend time in building the model, you can download a model from Hugging Face and directly do the text classification. But if you want to do it from scratch, you can use uh, libraries like NLTK, Spacey to build the application to do the text classification for you. The second project is Resume Parser. Here, you build an AI system to extract relevant information from the resume and then rank skills based on the profile. If you are an intermediate persona, then you can build projects like object detection where you can use advanced concepts like transfer learning to identify objects in images. Furthermore, you can build an AI video summarization which can also help you in quiz generation. Imagine you're sitting in a classroom and you forget to make notes. So you can build an AI video summarizer which will capture all the raw data. It will give you the summary of it and from that the quiz can also be generated. So here you can use LLMs like Whisper or Mixtral. Whisper can help you in conversion of speech to text and then you can use a LLM, a basic LLM that can take the inference from it. So if you want to build your career in AI, you can keep a close watch on roles like AI and ML engineer, AI ethics specialist, AI research scientist, AI solutions architects or NLP engineer. If I talk about some of the roles, if you want to become an AI research scientist, apart from what is told in this video, you can also focus on mathematical concepts like calculus, which includes differentiation, integration, matrix, then probability, statistics. These are all important skills to become AI research scientist. Here, you also have to focus on reading and writing the research paper as well. If you want to target NLP engineering role, you have to be really good in text analytics. You have to know some of the ways in which you can process the text and then provide it to your model. If you are targeting roles in AI engineering, you can follow every step that is told in this video. Or if you want to upskill further, you can research about some of the roles that, was to, that were told to you and also upskill yourself in some of the mathematical skills that I talked about to become an AI research scientist. So if you want more roadmaps and tech content, please let us know in comments. Thank you and see you in next video.